It's the YT and Chris Show. It's a bro. Yes, yes, yes. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to SA Bros. Good hand, Chris. What say you, Choma? Good Johnny, my bro. Up freaking lekker. I get lekker gebruik. I snuis het ek. I can uitpas. I get. I I go up. I sleep nie op die show vanavond. Want ons ons het 'n baie ou gast vanavond. We got the amazing Mr. Mel Miller, the Godfather of South African comedy. One of the funniest, cock funniest acts, and one of the dirtiest mouths I've I've ever heard on stage uh, yeah, compared so to me. Yeah, so let's just just let's just bring this up for a second, guys. This is gonna be a uh, no under 18s uh, show. I'm just gonna flash it up there every now and again, guys. This is where Mal Miller, he couldn't care two flying fucks. There we go. I'll start it. Uh, about <laughs> what you think he is 70? What is he? Uh, 70, 73 years. Now, was it he born in 43? That means 19... he's 77. Yeah, 1943, 14th of October. So he's 77 years old. Who is that? And still cracking a joke, but what mm. an amazing bro. Exactly. And we, say history loop deep, uh, we are going to talk to him about all this stuff. Uh, we'll keep it in English tonight uh, because yeah. of our English guests. And we have been, uh, we've got a couple of more Afrikaans guys coming up soon. But for yeah. now, Tonight's show is all in English. So to all our English uh, speaking people, we've got you. What is sorting out uh, with Mel there? It's just uh, one of the things when you're working with a uh, with a uh, Oatworm that uh, <laughs> that uh, you got to look out for and uh, make sure that uh, he knows what to do with all this tech, especially if there's no kids in the house. So we're gonna sort that out. There's a whole bunch of stuff we want to talk about today. We we've got mm. some questions lined up for for um, uh, Mel. That uh, yeah. is going to talk about, man, flat earth society and a whole bunch of stuff. So <laughs> I know what is getting him ready. What? I will not talk about you. Look off, sit. He's so after. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, my moisin. All right, hundred percent. Yeah. So like Chris said, uh, guys, we're going to talk to Uncle Mel. He's going to tell us some stories, old war stories, for a seventy-seven-year-old uh, person. And I see he is basically ready for us. So let's add Uncle Mel to the group. Hello, Mel. Um, yeah. How's, um, how's, yeah, yes, yes. Yes. how's it, Mel? How are you doing? Oh, very, very well, uh, fellow inmates. <laughs> yeah, fellow inmates. And the you, house you arrest missed... like everybody else. Yeah, and the well, house arrest like everybody else. Just a quick thing, you misspelled your name, if, if you could see there clearly, Mr. Mel Mul Miller. Miller. Yeah, Miller. Yeah, my finger, my finger got a stutter. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's so, just a situation with all this staying in yeah. home because today I felt like I was going to lose my mind if I didn't start a bri. I was going to I was going to go crazy. Yeah. 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 Well, fortunately, I've, I've I do woodwork. You see, so I spend my whole day in my workshop playing with my toys. You know. That's like a so Jesus I'm was a right. carpenter. <laughs> yeah, and look what happened to him, eh? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting already. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so yeah, you basically yeah. answered the question of what are you doing during lockdown? So there you have it, guys. He's busy with woodwork. He's a carpenter. <laughs> have you got something to show us, Uncle Mel, that you've made? Yeah. Oh. If you, if you go on my, my Facebook page, it's uh, it's handcrafted by Mel Miller. Handcrafted right. by Mel Miller. There we go. Right, they just go and search Mel Miller. The other thing I make, I'll show you now. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's see. The, the feed is a bit bad. Is that a bolt-on cutter? That's a yeah. bolt-on cutter. Yeah. yeah. It's a lack of fresh one. Yes. You know what? You're keeping the South African tradition alive. You made a beautiful bulton cutter there. And it also doubles as, as a circumcision kit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be uh, doing any more mitzvahs? Cape, you can make a fortune, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> now you go to the Eastern Cape, you can make a fortune, I'll tell you something. Yeah. Straight. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so Uncle Mel, tell us tell us a bit. What what, no, what, it's one, what of my, it's one of my 
Ooh, yo, the signal is quite bad at the moment. You know what? We're going to make a plan with it because uh, we know there's a bit of a delay. So I think Whitey will ask you a question and then we'll give you enough time to like answer the question at all the time you take. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. All right, okay. brilliant. All right, brilliant. So, um, uh, Uncle Mel, you were about to say something when we when our lines got crossed. What did you have to say there? Um, no, that, that, as I said, it was built on Qatar. If, if, if you want to take it to the Eastern Cape, you can make a fortune doing circumcisions, you see. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, this line is a bit bad, guys. So, Uncle Mel, besides now the woodwork, what else have you been uh, doing to keep yourself busy during this lockdown period? How's it affected you? Um, how's it affected the family? W what's going on? Tell us a bit. What's what, what are you up to? Well, my my wife, my wife is uh, is making masks for uh, you know for uh, what this uh, virus thing. Uh, she made for a uh, charity a whole stack of masks, and now wow. she's making more masks, so that keeps her busy. And uh, I'm in the workshop all day, just about, so that keeps me busy, and I'm out of her hair. <laughs> then uh, apart from that, I read, you know, I read a lot. I drink a hell of a lot of coffee, because <laughs> I don't drink alcohol. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I'm not a real South African. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you are as South African as they come because I know you, you. You've basically laid the track. What you you started in 1963 when you started with the comedy, and that was what with, with, as on radio shows and being a radio programmer. Tell us a bit more about that. Well, uh, I started in 1964. Um, we started doing folk music and comedy together. Yeah. Well, we we're doing folk music quite seriously until one night the audience weren't listening. So I just cracked a gag to see what had happened, and they laughed. I thought, hello, another world to me here. Yeah. And I carried on telling jokes, and uh, it's been that way ever since. I've done radio. I did. I was on Spock Radio on Jet Jungle and Squad Cars and all that stuff. And I went to Israel, and I did my um, comedy in Hebrew. Yeah. And the first night I did it uh, – I made a mistake with the grammar, so they laughed. I thought, okay, that's fine. So I rearranged my entire show with bad grammar <laughs> uh, as uh, um, a new immigrant to the country. Yeah. And uh, when I finished with Israel, I came back here and I carried on. And since then, I, uh, I did review theater and I've been doing stand-up for 54 years now. Talking rubbish for 54 years. Look, I'm getting... I... <clears throat> Sorry, why did you go? No, I was just going to say I'm getting paid for it. What a, what a life. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, like I know in, in like 1976, uh, yeah. you were on a, a Biltong and Pot Roast. Now, we spoke to Barry Hilton a bit earlier, I mean, last week, and he also said that like he got his break in, in that show. Like he, he used to hang out there, and that's how he actually got like discovered as well. Yeah, yeah, no, it was great. You know, up, up, uh, up till up till Biltong Potras, the only people who heard about us were from word of mouth. Yeah. And our agents talking about us to try and get us work. The minute that came out, I mean, two million people saw us in one night. Yes. And uh, the next day, I mean, I went out to go to the supermarket to buy something and I was mobbed. It was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from that day on, we, we were on television, and that was our big start. Before that, I was working full-time as a comedian, but but struggling to get uh, work. Yeah. After that, we got work up to our ears. I mean, in uh, in March, we were booked out for November already. Yeah. But yeah. Biltong Pot Trust was quite a program because we, we got paid 35 rand a show. <laughs> Even that was a lot. Lousy money. And mm -hmm. that was before tax. That was before yeah. tax. And we had to wait three months for the check, so it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a fortune back in those yeah, days. But it was good. Career. Well, it wasn't good money, but remember, the coverage we got was unbelievable. I, yeah. I mean, we'd never been seeing two million people in one night. I mean, it was insane. Yeah. And then on, we 
Gigner is happened to ask nine of, of the on the road doing gigs. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, well, Mel, I can see we got a guy here, Johan Potgieter. He just put a message up here. He says, hello, Mel. My favorite was Bultong and Potros. Where's Mr. Rubberface Boot? <laughs> he died three years ago. He died of emphysema. Oh, shame here. That's cock sad to hear that, man. Did you, hear, did you get that? <laughs> yeah, we got that. Oh, no, we we were... Um... Tony, Tony King and myself went to his memorial. It was uh, it was quite sad, actually. But he wouldn't stop smoking, man. You know Isn't, what I mean? Yeah. No, sure. that's caca. Uh, and tell I me, I'm the only one. Uh, well, Eddie Eckstein. Yeah. Eddie Eckstein and myself. Um, I think we're the only two remaining from uh, the Bolton team. The rest all gefrak. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. Well, the. <laughs> You know, like they say, Unkrat for Khoni. In Afrikaans, they say Unkrat for Khoni. So I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll live forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to. I love, I love, I love what I do. You know, every morning you wake up, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> not many people can say, hell, this is another day lacquer. I can do exactly what I want. Yeah. And I'm doing what I need to do. It's a God-given gift, you know, to make people laugh. Yeah. And uh, I love making people laugh. I, just, I really do love it, you know. Yeah, that, that 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 is good. And you know what? We've had, we've been privileged in South Africa having such a vast variety of great comedians. Um, the last couple of days, we've had some brilliant comedians on. We've got you on now as well. So it's 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 really it's it's you guys, the comedians, and so on, and uh, the entertainers that I think that keeps us sane during all these difficult times that we are going oh, yeah. through at the moment. You you need a good laugh, otherwise you're just going to kill yourself. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. But you know what worries me is, uh, uh, like I said, I've been in this business a long time. When mm. this, uh, the house arrest ends and uh, we're going to get gigs back again, um, the young guys are going to be out of work because... I can't see us getting work before September. Yeah. And if that, you know, and uh, uh, the young guys who got no other work besides doing comedy who have just started are going to really suffer because uh, they're going to have to try and get day jobs and there are very few of those going anyway. So it's going to be hard times ahead, let me tell you. That is very true. But one thing that I have noticed, and uh, I think that's it's, it's probably a spot where you're missing out a bit is – the young guys are using the, the these social platforms and you know all this technology, so they're doing live shows on air and getting paid for that stuff. We refuse to get paid for what we do at the moment because we I think we're delivering a service to to the people, and uh, we're fortunate enough to like have guys like you that actually want to just chat to the Oaks, tell us what's going on, and like you know let us know everybody's still okay and everybody's still normal. Mm. Uh, but you, you know, the problem with comedy is uh, if you try to do it live on TV, uh, on, uh, on the telephone, yeah. it falls a bit flat for me because there's no audience. I think for comedy, you need a bit of an audience. You, need, people, you need the reaction of an audience. Yeah. The, and then these guys are doing it thinking <laughs> that it's funny just to talk into a telephone. And, and it's falling flat a lot of it, you know. Absolutely. But the, the one thing I do do, uh, once a week is I, I get in my car and I, I drive across to Ireland Butchery, the best yeah. biltong in the country, let me tell you. And I buy my kudu biltong and I'm set for the week. Ireland, so where do you live? In, 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 you, you don't have to give your address out, but in, where do you live? Where Boxburg. does Mel Miller live? Boxburg. Boxburg. Yes, like a mad sea, Eastern boys. Me, yeah, yeah <laughs> Eastern boys. The, you know what? It's like yeah, the Eastern is, is the Eastern dominates, and I know that that precise butchery you're talking about. They do make the nicest biltong bliksom. Now I'm less for biltong. You won't believe me, Mel. <laughs> oh, the best. Yes. 
<laughs> but Such you know, the whole thing is that when my wife said to us, let's move to Boxburg, I thought, you're out of your mind. It's, a, it's, a, it's rubbish, man. It was All I remember was the bird park and, and open farm fields. Yeah. And we came here, and my God, I can't believe it. We live a half a kilometer from four big old malls. Yeah. So we got everything that they got in Joburg. Yeah. Plus, we get more sunshine in Joburg because we our buildings don't go more than three floors. Yeah, because, because of the, of the airport. Place. Yeah, yes. So we get more light than you are. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, yeah. I love Boxburger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, what listen, I'm an Eastern boy and I miss the Eastern. I'm wanna, living in the when we wanna go for it. Where Sorry. do you live? Now, now I live here in Riddapurt, but I was living there in, in Riddapurt, but I was living there in, in the Boxburg and in the Kempton and in the Benoni. So the East Rand's in my blood. Huh? I was raised there. Oh, that's lacquer. Yeah. No, that's lacquer because uh, if we and, and when we want to have a bit of entertainment or we want to go to the zoo, we just go to bed. <laughs> So I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching. Why you do some stuff? He's just sorting some stuff out for you, man. Yeah. So I've got a. I've got a. I've got a question here from Liz, Uncle Mel. Now okay. we've now we've established that you don't drink at all, but yeah. he's asking yeah. what keeps you so young and frisky, and then she ends it off by saying, "Is it whiskey?" <laughs> and let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm 76 years old. When somebody says to me, did you get any last night? It just means sleep. <laughs> That's all it means. At, at my age, you wake up in the morning and everything hurts. And what doesn't hurt doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just want to apologize to our listeners uh, again and so on that the feed is a bit bad, guys. So we're going to try and make it as bearable as possible, and just uh, I think Chris, we just need to leave a little bit of gap after the answer of and the question. Yeah, man. All right. So, so Uncle Mel, um, what what is what is the plans uh, going past uh, uh, post a lockdown for you? What uh, uh, are you going to do? Have you got any plans, shows, tours? What is it that's going to happen for you? Well, I'm not planning any tours, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll still be in this business. You know, I can't give up show business. I love it too much. So whatever work I can get after this, I'll be taking, and I'll enjoy every minute of it because it'll be a long time before we start working again. So I'm writing a bit of new material, and um, when we start again, I'll carry on doing my shows. That's all. Yeah. yeah no, no. <clears throat> sorry, sorry, Wadi. Well, Mel, you've been at the, the, the controversy of a lot of stuff uh, since the old South Africa and the new South Africa. We also know that at some stage, uh, you were actually like, almost, were you arrested or did they want to arrest you for like, fucking, I don't know, inciting shit back in the day? What was this, in, 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 in 1985? Yeah. <laughs> what happened there? 1988, actually. I was doing a show at the Carlton. Yeah. In the old Carlton Hotel upstairs in the top of the Carlton. I used to do two shows a night. One at half past 10. Yeah. And one at half past 12. And I was doing very anti-government comedy. Uh, saying the PW word. And in the parliament. And there were some guys from the security cops in the audience. And I didn't know uh, and they caught me in the garage afterwards, took me to the Hillbrow police station and beat the crap out of me, which was all right, because they're gone and I'm still here, so that's fine. Back, uh, wow. Okay. That's well, interesting. Well, Mel, you know what? You, you, you were the, at the controversy yeah, of all this stuff. Yeah, but can you remember any of the jokes you told that were like, you know, you, you just said, you know, oh, PV, I was smoking Zollenkak, but uh, – what, what would you say is, is the one political joke? Because that's, that's a very big uh, uh, department of yours. What is the political joke that you think you were like almost crossing the line? Which one do you think that you wrote that tested everything? Well, well I, said once, I said once they've, they've smoked weed, they start an orchestra. They're yeah. going to have Jimmy Kruger on machine gun. 
and I named the uh, I forget him now, but a couple of guys in Parliament, all on the most vicious things. And I, I really was, I was actually nasty. It wasn't, it wasn't a good comedy. Yeah. But it was just plain nasty. And uh, I don't say I deserved the hiding, but uh, it must have upset a lot of people. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm glad you did because you were the one guy, apart from being the godfather of SA comedy, you were the one guy that actually stood up for a lot of people's rights and stuff back then. And you were anti-establishment. And I think uh, most of the young guys now are anti-establishment without even knowing it, especially these new millennial kids. Uh, mm. And I think you like laid the foundations for that, man. And uh, we actually want to thank you because, because, mm. If it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be so many ugs talking jokes and cuck now. You literally mm. laid the foundations for comedians. Yeah. And here's so a I good thought, question. Well, yeah. it, 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 you know, it wasn't only me. There was yeah. Cyril Green. There was Cyril Green and Lynn Davis and Dennis McLean and Noel Glover. All these guys, we toured the country. We were, I mean, I was thrown out of, uh, out of uh, Ermelo. Yeah. <coughs> For talking cuck, I got up one evening and I said, <laughs> the, the week before they tried to be in traders out of the middle of the town, see, the, they had the Group Areas Act. Yeah. And they couldn't do it because they owed the, the farmers, owed the Indian traders too much money. Yeah. So um, I got on stage at night and I was so pissed off with these people. I said, Good evening, white trash. <laughs> and then they took me out of the town. What can I say? <laughs> well, you know what? I, I noticed that the people no. want to know more about your personal life, man. Here's a good question. I said to Amal, any kids and grandkids? And please tell us about them. Yes, I've got a, a son of 50. He lives in Australia. Yeah. He's um, uh, a lawyer, does the legal side of insurance. I've got a son who's 45. He lives in South Africa. He, is, he does uh, something with fine like Vietnam. I've got yeah. a daughter of 25 who's a travel company called um, um, Alice. They, 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 they haven't got offices. They work all around the world. They travel the world organizing trips. I've yeah. got four grandchildren. Well, three, one, three in, uh, in Australia, one here. Yeah. I'm getting old, man. I'm getting old. Yeah, <laughs> yes, see, man. Well, that you know what I know you're and gonna. I've got a lovely wife. Yes, I've got a lovely wife who saved my life. Actually, three or five years ago, I nearly died, and she got me to hospital in time. So, yeah, cut me open, fix me. Up, so I'm all right now. Well, yeah. that's that's a that's a miracle. Left, anyway, because I've heard some of the cock you talk about your wife on stage and. uh that the fact that she still helps you is is a miracle. Uh, that, that's that's true love, especially if, if she's if she's heard your comedy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> You're right, though. She deserves the medal, old lady. I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and I actually remember uh, that operation. You remember, uh, uh, Uncle Mel, that you actually came to perform there by. Uh, my club and Wackett's club there in, in Carnival City just after your operation. You remember we sat there backstage and you told me everything and I think my show was the first one after your operation. Am I correct? Absolutely correct. That was it. I remember, I remember working at, uh, at Wackett's uh, club and I had uh, bandages wrapped around my stomach and I yeah. was there. Mm. So they cut me open from my chest right down to my belly button, you see. Yeah. And so I was still strapped up and I worked there. It was the first thing I did afterwards. It was tougher. Yeah. yeah. And and that's why that's why I, I actually I purposely got Tony to be the MC and I made sure that I was also there for that night just because we wanted to obviously look after you and make sure everything was as comfortable as possible. But yeah, because I know you and Tony have walked a long path together. I tell you, what, when I was in hospital, really sick, and I was delirious. I was psychotic, and I, they had to strap me down and from all the drugs and everything. The one thing I remember, Tony the King feeding me tea through a straw. 
He sure. came one night, he gave me two strokes, my best man. We talk to each other every day. Yeah, wow. You see, that's that's a true friend. Uh, from young age to even when you guys are old toppies, uh, yeah. it, it's a friend is a friend, uh, no matter what. Absolutely. Yeah. And he's a great entertainer as well. He's amazing. I tell you, the guy yeah. does MC he up until the, the side of the MC he will work. If that tough, he'll get on or graft and work until they're on his side. And when they're on his side, he'll hand it over to a comedian. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. The best MC in the country, I tell you. Yeah. Well, and, and, mm. well Mel, I see there's, a, there's an interesting question here. It's from Richard Lloyd. It's a very good buddy of ours. He says, Mel, any plans on writing an autobiography? Uh, or maybe have you written a book already? And wait, yeah. Maybe we can get that if you've already written one. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'm not intelligent enough to write a book. Secondly, <laughs> I've always been at the right place at the right time. I've had luck. God's been on my side. Not one of these guys that suffered and slept in my car and tried to make a living. When I was I was working in the club, in the, in the folk club, we were offered a gig. At 300 rand a month at the Edward Hotel in 1964. That was a lot of money. Yeah. We went there on a three month contract. We lasted for two years. I finished that. I went to Israel. I did my shows there. I came back. I, I was working in a club here, and a guy called Alan Leslie came in with me if I want to be in his theatre. I've always been at the right place at the right time by God's grace and, and good luck. And uh, so I haven't got much of an interesting life to tell, you know. I think I smoked a hell of a lot of Dacha in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Mel, I, I tell you what, when this lockdown's <laughs> over, I think uh, me and Whitey are going to come through to you. We're going to bring a professional writer. And uh, we need to get your life story down on black and white, man. I know there's millions of people that would love to hear your story and to actually know what you did. So we, we'll look it up. And uh, see, you hit the right place at the right that. time again. You 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 just scoring now. So we'll definitely come and see you and uh, make sure that we get your autobiography I would out love there. That. Thanks, Dad. Thank, thank you. That's, for me. that's definitely on our list. Then that's that's something we can give back to the world. A, yeah. a, a gift Lekker. like you. It, it'll be a waste if if that stuff's not written down, man. Yeah. Right, here yeah, we've got another one. Lawrence van der Heerfer. Stand this has been very kind to me, hey. Yeah. You know, I've... You were saying? Have we lost you now? Uh, the show business has been very kind to me, you know. This yeah. industry has been very kind. I've, I've, I've worked hard and uh, I've made uh, money. I, I live in a lovely house. I'm fed. You can see how fat I am. <laughs> and um, and I, I, I've had a very good life from it. So I, uh, I like to give back, you know. One time, man. No. Well, Mel, we got to say thank you for having a chat with us. Yeah, we've, yeah. we've got one more question here. Let's make this yeah. the last question. Good evening, Mr. Mel. You obviously had yeah. many, many great performances. What would you describe as the one you most mem one of your most memorable performances ever? And that one's from Lawrence van der Jeffer. I'll tell you a story. My son okay. me from Australia, and he said, well, come and visit. This was in the time of recession. I said to him, well, I can't afford to mm. because of the uh, uh, brand, weak brand. So he said, no, look, I'll, I'll pay for the ticket. I said, no, you won't. I'll tell you what, if you can get a school, a school hall, throw yeah. people in there, and I'll come do a show and pay my at least. Yeah. He phoned me a week, and he said, are you – you want to play the Sydney House and painted. The Sydney and Opera we House. There and I best show I've ever done in my life. I played to a full house at the Sydney Opera House. Yes, wow. and we slaughtered Shit. them. I wow. tell you, we went out. It was the smaller theatre, but we sold out. It was wonderful. Oh, that was wow. the best. 
Excellent, man. Well, well, Mel, you know what? Since we got such a bad signal, we are forced to like kind of chop this one up a bit. But we got to say, you know what? Thank you so much for everything you've done for South African comedy. You are, apart from laying down the, 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 the lanes for everybody with other guys, uh, we just got to say thank you for giving us the gift of laughter for so many years. Uh, yeah. We will put up your link and stuff here. Uh, we'll be talking about a cuck off to you and actually telling people a bit more about you. But uh, we, you, we give you all our love and I hope you, you have an amazing lockdown. I'm sure Whitey still wants to say goodbye to his favorite yeah. club. Yeah. Well, Mal, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Be good. Stay home. Stay safe. And yeah, just look after yourself. Eh? And you, but thanks so much for everybody, everybody's concern and, and interest. Thanks a lot. Eh? Cheers. Awesome. Take care. Bye bye. bye. Hey. Dude, what a pity the feed is so cut. Because yeah. Mel is one of the funniest freaking oaks on this planet. Yeah. Guys, if, if you don't believe me, go check out any of his clips. There's a whole bunch of Mel yeah. Miller clips on YouTube that you can go check out and uh, support him. Go and like his stuff, man. And uh, yeah. just go check it out. He's got the foulest mouth. Uh, if we had a solid feed tonight and told him, listen, there's, there's uh, no age restriction on this one, so you can hoi, but yeah, he yeah, would have... Exactly climbed out of his box and tuned me and whitey stick and you know we've yeah. been we we're fortunate enough we've been roasted by a couple of comedians and yeah. uh and i know Mel would have just laid us flat dude we yeah. would have tuned us yeah in, no, in definitely. A different world he would have definitely tuned us so yeah uh hello tani debra lacro for tani to sing yeah this can it's a mother hello tani debra it's a spy looking out chinky and say it's a froky and normal En toets toese ma, ek het ek het recht gesê. Laat ek gaan gaan, jy sal net oom Mel antwoord, hang aan. Alright, ons praat met oom Mel. So, go check it out. Thank you guys for your support with our latest clip that we put up. It's from last night with Conrad Koch and his amazing chest him a sing. Uh, that's probably got the, the highest views out of any of our videos and stuff. And we got to say thank you to Conrad for that one. I uh, just think of it and I still want to crack up. So if you guys haven't checked it out yet, check it out on the page, uh, and keep on supporting SA bros. I know what is going to be back now. Uh, obviously he's saying, how's it to a Mel and when Mel is cocking him out, making him look like a football and stuff. So we're going to sort it not, out. Luckily not. Luckily not. He just, wanted, is it? he just wanted to check if everything was okay, if it went well. And he's, he apologizes as well for the feed being so cock. Um, it looks like there is a bit of signal issue in Boxburg. Um, the Easter end people will probably block some me, but it is the Easter end. You guys get internet a week later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a pity the whole Easter end is full of fiber. Never mind. Whitey, yeah. I still think it's a great idea uh, from me and your side. You know, I know we don't have any cash and stuff, but if yeah. we can get to a Mel's biography printed and stuff, I'm sure yeah. uh, you'll you'll strike up a deal with us and then maybe yeah, 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 an extra. Some extra bucks out of that. That'll be a brilliant idea. And I think yeah. uh, we'll definitely do that with him on Salam. No, with him fast market. They for the end, honest, I fucking deal here. Yeah, exactly. And we got to say thank you guys for supporting uh, SA Bros. Tonight is nothing wrong with the East Rand. Oh, I was just bro. teasing, Cindy. You know I was teasing. Uh, Chris, <laughs> it sounds like you're getting geared up to say goodbye. Actually, what I want to do is, guys, yes. um, we're going to... We obviously, like Chris said uh, earlier in the in the in the uh, show, that we don't actually ask money on Busker or Tip Jar or whatever else for this. We're doing this interview for you guys so that you can see how uh, uh, the celebrities are coping, what they are up to, and just the fact that we are missing them. We miss seeing yeah. them on stage. We miss seeing them perform, and any and everything. And that's why we created this channel. Um, obviously, we want to try and make it into a successful business, so we need your help. And uh, our our business advisor, Mr. Richard Lloyd, who's listening in tonight, yes. uh, gave us a very good idea that um, what that what we're going to start setting up very soon is we're going to start setting up a course on how to create 
your own YouTube channel through Facebook, through YouTube, through Twitter, through Instagram, to build a page, to grow a page about anything and everything. Now, it is an entry-level course, um, and it will be one-on-one -on -one tutoring for about a three-hour course that will be done similar fashion to this that either Chris or myself will be helping you guys with if you guys uh, are interested in learning how to set up your own YouTube channel that runs Absolutely. through Facebook and uh, Twitter and Instagram. Just about anything. The, the, there's so much content in this world that you can talk about. If you go watch some of the stuff on YouTube that people post on, and they get yeah. millions and millions of views. Our, our page is still brand new and still fresh, but uh, our Facebook page is over a 1,000 subscribers already. Our YouTube channel is steadily growing, and so on and so on. And and we will teach you and guide you about the do's and don'ts of our Absolutely. knowledge that we've had. Got. And it's only, again, it's just an entry-level course. It's not a, like a PewDiePie level course. That yeah. is, that's, we, we're not there yet, but we will, yeah. we can offer that and teach you guys that. So that will be coming up next week sometime uh, that we will love to offer you guys. Yes. But yeah, so, so, yeah. I, dude, I think it's a great idea. We will make a video about that and keep telling you guys about how to do all this stuff, how to get it up and running. Uh, even in these times, you are able to do this. If you got a laptop and a phone, you can pretty much do anything. So uh, stick around, keep liking SA Bros, and go check out, guys, everybody that's on Facebook and all our new Facebook people, please do us a favor. Go check out SA Bros on, uh, on YouTube and just like and subscribe to that, uh, yeah. to that page and man we'll forever be like grateful for you guys we are yeah. busy making a lot of videos and stuff for you guys to enjoy yeah. and uh, also to learn from so keep it up and uh, tomorrow night let's tell them who's on tomorrow night my brother oh. Darren Moore guys oh. 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 probably one up. of the best improv comedians in the country he is currently the breakfast show host on East Coast Radio um, he runs it there and, and guys, I've, I've been mates with uh, Darren Moore for a very long time. Chris knows him personally very well. Yeah. This man is so, so, so funny. Please, you do not want to miss it. And then yes. after afterwards, Chris and I, as usual, are going to Twitch TV. It's, and it's, we it's, are going to go nuts. I, I actually got out my old CDs from back in the day yes. when I was a CD DJ to get yeah. some proper old school stuff. So, guys... Please tune in. Everybody around the world is listening to us. I know, again, there's a few people from overseas watching. Tomorrow night, we're going proper old school yeah. party rave music. So please yeah. catch us then as well. And catch Darren Mall, the, the, the greatest guy. I know I cracked up last night, but I know with Darren, I'm going to crack up again. Just thinking about him also already makes me want to laugh already. And uh, thank you guys for all your support. We are going to say good night and make sure that you guys stay safe, stay in the house, and stay alive. Uh, from me and Whitey, man. Salute. Yeah. Salute, guys. Have a wonderful night. See you tomorrow. Cheers. Cheers. Well, goodbye, everybody. From SA Bros.